Hello and welcome. Welcome to worship with Caledonia Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Janice Doyle, and it really is a privilege and a blessing to have you join us from your safe space where we continue to gather, not related by physical blood, but we are related by the blood of Jesus. And so we are united even across time and space. We gather to praise, to pray, to learn, to encourage, to support, and to worship. So again, welcome, and I thank you for joining us. And I'm just so grateful that you've chosen to spend some time to worship. And so we're gonna prepare ourselves to worship, and as we do, I invite you to pause, to, to breathe, to allow yourself to settle in. Be aware of how you're feeling physically, mentally, even spiritually, emotionally. Breathe in and breathe out. And we're just gonna play a little piece of music here as we prepare to worship together. So here we are, come, come just as you are. Come, you are hungry, you are weary. We praise the God who made us. We praise the God who created us to be in a relationship. We praise our savior. We give thanks to our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. So come, let's worship together, all you people. And so I invite you to pray with me. Let's pray together, shall we? And so I'll ask you to pray. Let's pray together. God, you are mighty and majestic. We continue to see the glory, your glory, in the heavens and on the earth. Your love transforms lives. You enter our confusion and give insights. You bear our grief, you bring healing. You see our fatigue and renew our strength. You sense our fear and spark courage. You know death and you raise up new life. And so here we are and we come to you in worship, handing everything over to you that weighs us down. Renew us in this time of worship, we pray, so that we may serve you wholeheartedly, so that we may serve others, bringing light and love to the dark corners of the world. And yet we also come to you knowing, Lord, that our lives don't always reflect your transforming power, or your transforming love. You're gracious and generous, and sometimes we're not. You're kind, sometimes we may be cruel. You are so forgiving, and yet there are times when we, we nurse our old grudges and we cling to those old wounds. And so, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Forgive us when we neglect to see the needs of others. Forgive us when we fail to be generous. Forgive us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and make us new through Christ, your Son and Savior. Amen. And so our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. We're traveling through Matthew, and, and Jesus has this conversation with just his disciples. He had traveled to that wonderful Olive Garden. He's up there, actually, in the Mount of Olives. 
and his group of disciples had joined him. And there he gives quite the discourse, including the parable of the ten virgins, as well as the parable of the talents. And here we are, we're going to pick up the conversation. As Jesus, I imagine him leaning in and speaking to his closest friends. So Matthew 25, starting at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in all his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. And they will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So as many of you are aware, um, we delivered some school supplies last month to our local food bank. And we asked if there was a specific need within the community. And yes, that's what brought about our worship here today. We're calling it our Undie Sunday. And thanks to so many people who have supported this initiative uh, through donations and through prayers. But you know, it's not only happening in our community the ask that is specifically for men's underwear, men's boxers, men's briefs, and even men's socks. I've come across the Men's Street Ministry. It's a fabulous initiative based out of Brantford and Hamilton, and they specifically bring food, clothing, and God's word and God's love to others. Yes, mostly men, but a lot of families are, are affected. And uh, it's said, actually, that here in Canada, on any given night, on any given night, there's 35,000 people sleeping on the streets. And we have experienced this right here in our own community. In fact, right here at this very church. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen, even as recently as just over a week ago. The problem is real, and it's not just in those city centers. It's here 
It's here in our own community. And while we may not necessarily see these people, especially here in Haldeman, we wouldn't see them quite as obviously as we might in Hamilton or Brantford or Toronto. There is a very real problem of food security here in our community and in the communities across the county. So if we're going to ask about food insecurity, first we ought to define it. What is food insecurity? Food insecurity is defined as a household level economic and social condition of limited or even uncertain access to quality and adequate food. So food insecurity can be experienced in a number of different ways. For example, like so many, there is, there are, there are increased anxieties and stresses, especially about the cost of food and inflation going so high. I mean, just walk down the aisle in a grocery store and you can see how much the prices have changed. It can be experienced in eating a limited variety of foods or consistently eating the same food because it's more economical, especially when they're the same low cost foods and even feeling like you need to compromise the types of food that you eat in order to save money. According to the Canadian Public Health Association, food bank use in Canada has reached its highest level in history. In March of just last year, nearly 1.5 million visits were reported across the country. And this represents an increase of 15% over the previous year and 35% higher than it was before the pandemic. This record happens, has happened, because so many Canadians are experiencing the crushing cost of living, the crushing inflation that's happening. And it's combined with, with wages and, and social supports that aren't keeping up with the cost of living. They don't keep up with the needs. In fact, food bank use significantly underestimates the severity of food insecurity. And the pervasive focus on food banks as a strategic solution of household food insecurity, it highlights the misplaced priorities and lack of progress. Because using a food bank is actually just a Band-Aid. It doesn't address the problem. It's just putting a Band-Aid on it. It's helping, yes, it's helping. Causes and consequences of food insecurity are not just a lack of food. Food insecure households, they struggle with unmet needs, including housing and utilities. There is a very real problem. Do I pay the hydro bill or do I get some fresh fruit? Do I pay the rent and limit the amount of money that's left over? for groceries. One worries about the cost, but still is able to purchase food. That's still food insecurity. And let me tell you, I've been there. I have been one of those moms who had to put things back on the grocery store shelf because I knew I couldn't afford it at that time. So I get it. The problem is real. It's not new. And it affects so many. So then there's this moderate food insecurity is, is not having access to the right quality or quantity of food, like purchasing fresh fruits and vegetables and fresh meats. Now these people are still eating, but not the, the fresh fruits and vegetables and so forth. They may be eating more junk more fillers. They're still eating, they're still getting their food needs met, but they're eating because it's cheaper. 
And then we have severe food insecurity in which the person or the household actually skips meals or, or goes without eating because the food just isn't there. Now, yes, there are less people that suffer the severe food insecurity and most are suffering from the mild food insecurity. But by the time someone in a food insecure household, by the time they actually visit a food bank, they've exhausted other means of staying financially afloat. Now they ask loved ones for help, they're skipping meals, they're asking the community for help, overstretching bill payments, stretching out, even stretching out medications to make them last longer. And so food banks and charitable donations, our community has been amazing in supporting them. Our, our people, people really are quite generous. But food banks and these charitable donations are not a solution to the hunger problem, to the food insecurity problem here in Canada. And again, I do truly thank you all for the many ways in which you support our food banks and the related associations. But it's really sad to think that this, this is just a band-aid in the underlying problem of our society. We need better government policies. We need better care for our peoples, even as we continue to share our resources. And unfortunately, the reality is that there is no single solution to this problem. But you know, it, it, can, it can be a start, even if we do try and make the Band-Aid a little bigger. As Mother Teresa once said, if you can't feed 100 people, then feed one. And so here we are with our undie Sunday where we've collected these undergarments. And if we can't clothe a hundred people, then let's clothe who we can. So I thank you again for your generous hearts. I thank you for your generous prayers. And may we all strive for a better tomorrow trusting that it is in God's hands. Hallelujah and amen.
And so I'll ask that you pray with me once again. Let's pray together. And so, Lord, as we give thanks for the generous offerings that are poured forth, the offerings of time, talent, resources, money and givings, and yes, even the undergarments too, we ask that you bless them all so that they may be used to show your light and love in the world. We give you thanks, God, because you have blessed us with so much, and we know that there are so many that have too little. So bless those gifts as they touch lives. We come before you today, glad to know that you give us the chance to change our lives, especially if we may have wandered away from your purposes. We give you thanks for the encouragement and support we receive from friends in Christ and even strangers on the streets. Thank you for making our community one that lives out your grace and mercy, one that reaches out in grace and mercy. But today, Lord, we especially pray for those among us and around us who are struggling, struggling to live wisely and well. We pray for those who seek a way of integrity for the future. We pray for those who are confronting issues or trying to change harmful habits. Give them persistence and support. We pray for those who are seeking to make amends. Lord, teach them judgment and wisdom in action and relationships. We pray for those who are seeking new opportunities and those who are seeking out new ways to live out their faith. Lord, help us to communicate God's love in fresh ways so that others can catch the vision of your love. Lord, you know the hard places and the soft places of our lives. You know the people and the situations that concern us, that weigh heavy on our hearts. And so we take that time and we lift them to you now. Holy Spirit, you have the power to transform. And so we ask that you work in us and in all of those for whom we pray. as we boldly pray those words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so I thank you again for joining us. As you go forth into the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your life, wherever you go, May you know that God is calling you wherever you are. God has put you there. God has a purpose for you right where you are. So the Christ who indwells in you with the power of the Spirit wants to do something for you, in you, through you. Believe that. Go into the world. Make a difference. Be kind, knowing you are loved and you can make a difference. All power to our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Go in hope. But above all things, go in love.
love. Amen.